Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Phoblographers IGTV. I'm Dan Jin and I'm joined by guest Jen Rosenbaum. Now Jen is a boudoir photographer, Nikon ambassador and doing some exceptional work at the moment. So Jen, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. Yeah. And I think what I want to start with, I was I was looking at your website and you've got the the tagline shamelessly feminine. Yeah. And I just wanted to kind of understand how the term was born and how it has kind of evolved since you started it. Yeah. So <laughs> interestingly enough, I didn't I didn't really create shamelessly feminine. Uh -huh. Um I use the tagline in my business um, that I allow every woman to celebrate their unique femininity shamelessly. Mm -hmm. So I use that. And then all of a sudden other people started tagging me in pictures on Instagram and they would use the hashtag shamelessly feminine. And I was like, this is kind of interesting. Something is going on here. Right. So yeah. uh, I sort of adopted it, but I didn't create it. Uh, but for me, really shamelessly feminine is about um, really being the biggest version of yourself possible without any fear of what people think about you or any shame um, and really about expressing your femininity the way you want to and not fitting into a box. Excellent. It's, it's clearly a positive thing. It's, it's wonderful that the kind of the term was given to you by people who are supporting your work. It's, it's very inclusive. So it's, it's impressive. Yeah. I, I like that. Now, Thank you. I know it's been a difficult time for you especially over the past 12 months mm -hmm. and I know some people use photography kind of as a way to escape and maybe as a form of of therapy like when mm -hmm. you were when you were battling cancer what kind of role did photography play was it was it therapeutic to you at all um <coughs> excuse me I'm just getting over a cold no, okay. um you know, interestingly enough, when I was in the cancer battle and I was fighting cancer, I really used photography as a distraction. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a way for me to feel normalcy. I would go to, you know, on my off weeks of chemo, I would shoot clients or um, shoot fellow breast cancer survivors. And it was a way for me to just feel normal and connect with something I love. Since I finished treatment and, um, you know, you start going through the emotional healing and the physical mm -hmm. healing at the same time. I actually think that part of my journey has been much harder than the actual illness part, which I, I think people don't understand. And, and I'm okay. actually writing a book about it because I think most people talk about fighting the illness and how strong you need to be to go through chemotherapy and treatments. And you do need to be strong, but you're in survival mode. Like your mind is just like, well, we're doing what we need to do to survive right now. So there's no mm -hmm. question. The minute that's over, it's sort of like the emotional tidal wave comes over you and you're like, what am I supposed to do? So for now, like, so where I used to use photography for normalcy, now I'm using it more as art therapy to um, yeah. heal myself, express myself, um, and to create a normalcy in showing my chest and, sh and showing what mastectomy looks like and what mm -hmm. cancer looks like and giving sort of giving the world a little bit of a glimpse of like, you know, this is what it looks like. And it's not as scary as you think it is. And it's a little bit, you know, I'm just trying to normalize it a little bit more. And is, is that kind of how you're, you're doing a project at the moment, um, self portraits, is that kind of linked is, is what, what role is that playing kind of in, in this next part of your journey uh, um, with, with what you're experiencing? Yeah, you know, over the years, I have asked my clients and, and the women that I work with to step in front of the camera and bear it all and tell a story and help change the world. And so it occurred to me one day that I need to do that, too, and mm -hmm. that I have a story, too, and that I have um, a strong story, you know, a success story, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, know, no, absolutely. Um, absolutely. <laughs> And I think it's easy for people to look at me and say, well, you look good and you're still working and everything looks great from the outside, but inside there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of struggle. Um, there's a lot of healing that's happening. And so for me, my method of communication with the world is my art. And so mm -hmm. I'm using that to show people what it feels like inside. Um, and again, again, being able to show my wounds and my scars, because there's mm -hmm. something that, that I'm very proud of, actually. And I always say I'm very lucky because anytime I think I'm facing something hard, I can just look down and be reminded that I can do anything. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also a matter of accepting my body and 
um, using it for good yeah. <laughs> allows me a little bit of healing in that, okay, there's, there's purpose here. It's not just an amputation or an illness. Um, there's purpose to it. Do, do you feel the project is, is of the self portraits? I mean, is helping with your body confidence? Is it helping you accept kind of who you are and, and where you are physically right now and, and, and the journey you've been on? Yeah, I think that, <coughs> listen, on any given day, I can get out of the shower and look in the mirror and see my chest and go, whoa, what happened? You know, like, how did, how did I get here? How did this happen? Um, and I don't, you know, often I think when we have surgeries like this, we compare like the before and after. Well, I used to look this way or I'll never look that way again. Or does it look strange or weird? Are people going to notice? I think doing this project allows me to see some beauty in my struggle and what I physically look like, even though it's not um, typically physically appealing. It's not like typically beautiful. Um, it's it, I'm saying, you know what, it doesn't look like how breasts are supposed to look, but I'm going to take it and make it into a piece of art and make it beautiful and um, create my own path in that way. And I, I think you're doing that. I exceptionally well to be honest with you you know I've, I've I've seen some of the images from, from the project and I don't know I, I, I see a certain level of confidence and acceptance in yourself and, and I think that's that's a wonderful thing and I know a lot of your clients that will come to you uh, maybe facing their own body confidence issues or insecurities I was just interested to kind of understand when, when you're doing a shoot what what's your process in terms of helping them to feel comfortable and more relaxed in front of the camera and kind of put their insecurities to one side and just be in front of you? <laughs> well, I think that um, part of sharing my journey is part of that because they see that and they connect with it and they say, well, if she does it, I can do it too. So mm -hmm. then they, it builds trust and then they come into the studio and I mean, let's be honest, what is a girl going to say? when she sees my photos and then she comes in and what is she going to say? Oh, I hate my body. You know, she, it has to give her a, a better appreciation for her body as well. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes, <laughs> excuse me, sometimes they do, they come in, I hate this, I hate that. And we just talk about it. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of communication. There's a lot of like, well, I, I hate my nose and I don't like the way I photograph. I go, oh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I'll make you look good. Like I kind of blow it off sometimes. You know, yeah. um, and honestly, the proof is in the pudding. When you take a beautiful picture of a woman and she sees it, she believes you. You know, mm -hmm. I always say that you can take a thousand beautiful pictures of a woman and one bad one, and she always believes the bad one. So yeah. it's it's a big responsibility that we take great images and we can show them the back of the camera and say, look, this is actually authentically you. And they mm -hmm. go, whoa, maybe what I've been thinking and what I've been seeing in the mirror all these years is actually not right. Maybe this is right. Mm hmm. I think, yeah, that's that's wonderful that you're able to do that. And it, it's it's good that they can. I think it's very difficult um, for a photographer to kind of make someone feel that they empathize with the person's situation. But what's, what's wonderful about your situation is you can relate to it. You're, you're kind of on the same path with your clients and you're you're walking it together. Mm -hmm. And I, I can I can only imagine being on that journey together is is what helps create such such wonderful wonderful images really yeah it's an exchange of energy you know it's an yeah. exchange of healing it's like i'm healing them but they're also healing me and it's funny i'm so i i'm just about finished writing a book it's called shamelessly feminine it's it's um not a photography book but it talks a lot about my photography journey and my journey with cancer and my body and, and everything and one of the in the first chapter one of the sentences I, I write in there is that I'm not writing to you in a place of superiority I'm writing to you in a place of solidarity because I'm in it with mm. you you know and I'm just sharing my experiences because you know I can talk about it in the book I talk about self-confidence and body image issues and you know fighting fear and all of that and I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face but the truth mm -hmm. is I still deal with it and anybody that stands up and says, well, I'm perfect and I figured it all out is just a liar, right? So, <laughs> um, so that's, you know, now it's for me writing the book is sort of doing what I do with my camera without my camera. But when I have my camera, it's 
it's, yeah, it's me saying to them, I don't, I'm not judging you. I do it too. I also yeah. hate my thighs. I also hate my nose, but I'm also going to do all these things and put myself out there and talk about it regardless of hating it, because the, the message and the presence is more important than the perfection. And, you know, this, this ideal of what women should be is just it's just garbage, you know, it's just garbage. We need to just be who we truly are. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's not for me for a, as a man to, to start telling women how to feel and, and, and how to be, I think, and, and I wouldn't do that, but at the same time, what do you think kind of as a community of photographers, what photographers can do in, in general, just to help promote better body, uh, body confidence, not, not say there's a status quo of how women should be. What, how, how can we be better um, as an artistic community or just as, as people in general to, to help women just feel good about themselves? I think every artist has a responsibility of how they want to show up in the world. For me, my responsibility comes in the way of um, not <coughs> excuse me, not um, post-processing the body all that much. So most of the images that you see on my Instagram, for example, are not even retouched at all. They're usually wow. straight out of camera. Um, I don't, you know, I may take out a blemish or, or mm -hmm. whatnot, but I really don't alter the body in any way. I think if you have stretch marks, I want to embrace them. If you have, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's really a matter of dressing right, posing them right, lighting them right, giving them the confidence, and then not having to change it in post-production. You know, really mm -hmm. getting their, their um, I want to call it the good side, but I don't just mean technically the good side. I mean everything, their, their personality. You know, if, yeah. you, if you stay true to who they are, that will come out. And I think showing up in the world, by the way, you put your message out. And what do your photos mean? I think it's so easy in this day and age for a photographer to just put up a picture of a hot girl in lingerie and get, you know, 100,000 followers and, and whatever mm -hmm. and objectifying the women in a way. I'm very clear about my message. It's not about objectifying the women. It's about empowering the women. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you see the image how you want to see it. But what my message I put out is about the po body positivity um, mm -hmm. and the confidence and really getting clear and um, intentional about what you're shooting and what you're writing to go along with your shoots and the message that you're putting out there. I think that really yeah. helps build women's confidence and takes away sort of those stigmas. I mean, I always say like the models don't even look like models, right? Like supermodels mm -hmm. don't even look like supermodels because what we're seeing is so airbrushed and retouched and perfect. Yep. And there's a place for that, but it's not in my home, <laughs> you know, yeah, for me, yeah. in my, my home or my Instagram page or whatever you want to call it, um, I'm showing the realness of what being a woman is. And that's my I, responsibility. And I think, I think you, you, you touched on it in the way that you said, uh, you know, anyone could, could just do some provocative kind of model looking images and, and get lots of followers. And I think whilst I've, I found the images that you produce the the subjects are, are are very attractive but what makes them so much more attractive is you can see them connecting with that confidence that they may have not done previously and that that's what makes your work for me so refreshing and and standing out from the rest because it is much more than women in in underwear it's it's so much more than that and yeah. i mean dare i even say that the the photo is secondary you know, yeah. it's really about the story. It's about the therapy. It's about the connection. Like I always say, I'm not a photographer. I'm a photographer therapist. Um, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Photo therapy. Therap <laughs> yeah. You know, what I do has a therapeutic aspect to it. And that to me is more important than the image. And I'm not saying the image isn't important. It's how I make my living. It's, you know, it's, yeah. but the image is just a souvenir. It's just a reminder of how they felt that day. So that this way, when they need to call on that, they have a reminder to do so. Because you, you've been shooting for is it eight years about 10 years T 10 years do, do you think kind of if you compare your approach before before your battle with cancer to, to afterwards has it has it changed in any way did that experience change it in any way and, and if so how how yeah it has changed it's funny i started noticing that my photos were actually a little bit darker than okay. usual um <laughs> and when i say that i mean that both in actual light and mm -hmm. um concept i think um which is it's not a bad thing it's a good thing um mm -hmm. i think that my intentions have changed a lot so i really don't like 
shooting like um for example a bride who just wants to do a picture a picture for her husband really holds no interest for me you know it didn't really before but it really doesn't now it's like now it's like uh okay i could give or take i want a woman who i can really make an impact on um Mm -hmm. you know uh i also think that my image i've I've sought out more women that i believe need to be in front of the camera um so that's changed a little bit i don't just wait for them to come to me i go to them and say you need this um Yeah, and I just think that um, every time I pick up the camera, I want to make sure that it's it's purposeful. You know, I just, for me, that's really important. It's not just about taking pretty pictures. It's really about holding purpose for me. That's great. And now I know you, you, you said you're writing a book and we're, we're, we're in January now. What's kind of your focus, uh, probably the book uh, or anything else for, for the rest of the year? If, if we chat again a year from now, what... Um, what would you have done during that 12 months and, and how would you have, what would you have done to achieve it? <laughs> oh man, this is such a good question. Um, it's funny. I've gotten really real about this the last few days. I don't like making New Year's resolutions because I think everybody else is doing it too. And it's kind of lame. Yeah. So I wait till after the New Year. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> the groove of the New Year. This book will be done. Actually, I'm, I'll be done writing it today. Um, and so it will be out in the first half of this year. And so for me, I really want to spread some awareness um, with this book um, about yeah. shamelessly feminine and really helping inspire women to live their biggest lives. I call it, um, you know, a kick ass book for women. Oh, it's and I also have a podcast, Shamelessly Feminine. So we call it uh, the, the podcast for kick ass women who need a kick in the ass. And that's yeah. really what the book, book will be also. <laughs> I'm actually writing a second book right now called Reconstruction yeah. about putting your life back together after cancer. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that will be out maybe towards the end of the year or early next year. Um, and my goal right now is really to work with more women that I consider um, unconventionally beautiful and okay. proving to them that what they think is the ugliest part of them is actually the part that makes them the most beautiful. And, um, you know, hopefully putting together a coffee table book for that to raise money for breast cancer awareness. So in addition to shooting clients and having my regular business daily, you know, happenings, um, Mm -hmm. I'm really trying to push myself to get my message out there a little bit more, hopefully do some more speaking engagements based on that. And honestly, to take more downtime this year, because I really need to take care of me. I have you know, I'm, I'm a year out of treatment and I'm still kind of feeling crappy many days and I'm really just trying to turn that around and take care of myself now. Absolutely. And I think, I think that is, that is important, you know, and if I haven't made this clear enough already, I th- honestly, I think what you're doing is, is truly exceptional, uh, exceptional. You, you're a credit to not just, just the photographic in- industry, but just women in general and men, you know, it, it, you know, you're setting an example for, for men and women. And I think that's something that you should be extremely proud of. And I, I really enjoy kind of following you and, and seeing what you're doing. So yeah, it's, it's great work all around. Thank you, Zan. I appreciate it so much. And I appreciate your time and, and, you know, you helping me bring this message to the world. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, I'm going to, we're on very different time zones. So I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll, I'll, I'll get settled down for the evening. Okay. Sounds good. Have a good night. <laughs> Jen, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.